Greetings and welcome again to the Gaming Codex, a show where I will try to explain to you all the various terms used within video games and the video games industry. Today's term is again an important one, many of them are, and that is OpenGL. And what exactly would OpenGL be? According to the general definition, Open Graphics Library or OpenGL is a cross-language, cross-platform application programming interface or API for rendering 2D and 3D vector graphics. The API is typically used to interact with a graphics processing unit, a GPU, to achieve hardware accelerated rendering. Meaning that much like DirectX or Direct3D to be more precise, it is the thing between the game and the driver and the hardware and the OS somewhere around there as well. It is needed for games to work if it is used. I mean, you can also use DirectX instead of it. And if you're wondering, OpenGL was not made as an alternative to DirectX. It was made specifically because it needed to be made. More precisely, it was made by Silicon Graphics, a company that developed hardware and software for rendering video. And they were doing it a while ago. I mean, some of their first products were offshoots of the 60,000 Motorola CPU. You know, the one that was in everything for a while. And their solutions were called Iris, short for Integrated Raster Imaging System. And it had an API called Iris GL, which was Iris with graphics library added to it. There was, however, a problem for Silicon Graphics. It started to have competition, quite a lot of it. And the only way it thought it could actually continue was to make Iris GL open source and give it to everybody and make it a sort of a standard so that everybody would still use its software. It did not entirely succeed on account of Iris GL containing some proprietary technology that could not be open sourced. But the bits of it that could be open sourced were. And around the year 1992, OpenGL was released to the public. Well, to the community of developers. And then they continued to work on it because it represented something that people actually needed. It was a graphics library that took into account the fact that you'd probably be using the software written for it on very different hardware. Not on the exact same spec not on the exact same chip. It was needed. It had a level of abstraction, gave you a higher level of access to the hardware, meaning you didn't have to worry about where every bit of memory was. You didn't have to code specifically for each type of hardware for the program to run. And that was very much needed back then. It saved people a lot of headaches. But keep in mind that OpenGL was not specifically made for games. It was a 2D and 3D rendering library. It did not cover things like control, sound. It was made for graphics to run on the hardware. And it wasn't developed by a single company, but by the OpenGL Architecture Review Board, which was a consortium of different companies all working together to build upon this technology. A member of it was Microsoft itself, up until 2003 when it left. And then the Architecture Review Board gave away OpenGL to the Kronos Group, which was better suited to actually develop it. That in short would be the history of OpenGL and its general definition. Now what would be the popular definition of it? Well, there's two of them. One of them of course is a what? And the other one is why isn't everyone using it, it's probably because Microsoft paid everyone off. There's always been a hubbub of conspiracy surrounding the implementation of OpenGL not being as widespread in video games as it could be. It's especially perplexing considering that OpenGL will work on a Mac, will work on Linux and will work on Linux. And it's not really that hard to find conspiracy theories about Microsoft paying developers to not use OpenGL. Now I'm not saying they're completely false, I'm just saying that they didn't have to pay them. There was one point in which Microsoft actually was trying to unify OpenGL and DirectX into its own thing, something that would be both at the same time. The best of both worlds, if you will. It was even a part of that 
that board thing that was, uh, you know, developing it. If you're having flashbacks to what Microsoft is doing now with Linux, you should, because this is the Microsoft strategy. It joins something, sees what it is, uses what it can from it, then leaves, and then begins the FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It is a campaign that Microsoft has pretty much developed to the point of perfection. They are able to spread fear of a certain technology, uncertainty, doubt, at a level that will make people consider, you know what, maybe we should go with Microsoft's solution, doesn't seem to have the problems they're saying that the other one has, and it works. Microsoft has used this since the beginning of time, and it works, it, it's effective. I mean, it's effective on people that don't actually know the differences between DirectX and OpenGL. Because when the campaign started, DirectX was kinda not very good compared to OpenGL. And some people took offense to Microsoft's campaign, people like John Carmack, that started using OpenGL out of curiosity and found out that it was actually kind of good. And they've insisted on using it ever since. Which is why every game made by its software is at its core coded to work with OpenGL because it works on every platform. There is no reason to put DirectX in it because there is no added benefit. OpenGL has, I mean, supported certain features like motion, blur and tessellation since before DirectX implemented them as a standard for itself. And a couple of years ago you would see a lot of games coming with both DirectX and OpenGL as options for the player to use depending on what they perceive to be better for their system. That kind of stopped after a while, which means we're getting to the marketing definition of OpenGL and that is, oh god, not this again. There's about three reasons why OpenGL is not as widespread today as it used to be or it should be in terms of video games. FUD was an important one. Then there was the expansion of the DirectX platform itself thanks to the Xbox, which was the DirectX box. Games developed for the Xbox were, in a way, built on DirectX and could be ported to Windows with DirectX, so people did that. There was no point in adding support for OpenGL as well because why would you? What other platforms were there at that time for gaming? The Mac? Oh please, that thing was a pile of crap for gaming. They were based on power PCs and horrible. What did you have for gaming? You had Linux? Linux drivers were kind of horrible for video cards back then, so why bother? It, it was just not practical. So more games with DirectX only showed up. And because more games with DirectX only showed up, more games with DirectX only began to show up. And more, and more, and more, and more, and more. And then something absolutely pivotal happened. Kronos screwed up big time. There was a proposal somewhere around the year 2006-2007 for the creation of a complete overhaul of OpenGL. It was to be called OpenGL 3.0 or codename Long Peaks. It was supposed to change a lot of things about the basic architecture. It would still include backward compatibility with the old stuff, but it was something new. Something brave, something bold, something that the community was excited about. But when the final specifications for OpenGL 3 were released, it was nothing like they said it would be. Apparently, the Kronos group found some issues with the, some of the new things they were gonna change and uh, decided, you know what, L let's not do anything new, anything revolutionary, let's just build upon OpenGL 2 and improve some things and uh, leave it at that. This caused some unhappiness in the community of developers, with some of them actually saying that, you know what, I know Direct Extends kind of shit as well, but uh, I'm gonna chow down on it now. So thanks, Kronos Group. The reputation of the the group was kind of not as good after that. It, it took a while to build itself back. Because when you promise innovation, when you promise something completely new and brave, and you don't do it, it kind of seem like you're cheating people, you're lying to them, like you're backpedaling. That fortunately would change with the advent of Vulcan, which is something we'll talk about another time. So closes this edition of the Gaming Codex, come back next time when we will talk about something else. Yes, it, it will be Vulcan. Goodbye.